In this video, we're working on a regen C15, but the emission system has nothing to do with the problems in this truck. Does not sound good. Customer brought it in for the Jake's not working, as well as some weird overhead noise, which it definitely has. Find some very interesting things and what I consider to be the worst overhead damage I've ever seen in an engine. What is it? You'll have to wait and find out. Hey guys, Josh with the Update channel, and we've got quite a bit going on. So I was off work last week, back this week, but we have tons of projects. This one just came in. This is a Regen C15. We had done some sensor minor stuff to it a few weeks ago, about a month ago, and came back. It's got something major going on with it now. We're going to be taking a look at that. We're going to do a cylinder cutout test on that. We've got that D8. They've told me to put a cylinder head on that one. So we're going to be putting a cylinder head on that one, putting the valves back in the old head, going that. We also have the Trash Fire International is still here. It's been sitting. EGR cooler's already been put back in it. The EGR and intake system's fixed, but it's got some other problems that we might have to take a look at. So let's first look at the truck we're already in right now and see if we can figure out why it's running so weird. So this here is the engine. We always do our little walk around and we're going to check the oil. And this is what they call an SDP because that is the serial number prefix. It's the only regen on highway C15 that they ever made. Widely considered to be the worst C15 they ever made. And not a lot of argument against that. Oil level's good, looks clean and full. You can see it's quite dusty. I'm going to pressure wash it off super fast before bringing it in. And that's... That's pretty interesting. Pretty sure they're supposed to be in that retaining that. You can see why this is such a not liked engine here. It's got the ARD head, a whole bunch of extra lines, fuel line sensors that all the other C15s did not have. Does not sound good. So I've already got our cylinder cutout test. There are no really related faults. There is intake valve system actuation, oil pressure control valve not responding. That one's coming on and off. I'm not sure what's going on there. Let's do a little cutout test. Now I do lots of cutout tests in these videos, but this one sounds like it might actually do something. So if you look at the fuel delivery, you can tell it kind of shakes more when I cut that cylinder out and the fuel delivery goes up. So if you look at fuel delivery, when I cut out one, it goes up. That means the engine has to compensate by having an active cylinder cut out. So if it doesn't go up, that means that cylinder's not contributing. So we know one's firing. Two is definitely firing. Nothing. Three has done nothing. Four. Nothing. Three and four. Interesting. Five is firing. Try six. Yeah, six firing. So three and four are not firing. Let's, I'm gonna go wash this engine off real quick and then we'll pour it in bay. So one thing I noticed was the coolant reservoir looks a little weird, very dark. The coolant does look clean though looking in there. It's hard to see from this camera view, but I don't know if they had an oil cooler failure sometime in the past or why it's so dark, but coolant does look to be in good condition. Right behind we have the D8 and Trash Fire International still sitting there. So what we're gonna have to do is, and one thing that makes these SDPs troublesome to work on is a lot of them have the air filter mounted over the valve cover which most of the older c15s never did that's not really cat's fault that is in this particular engine kenworth's fault now one thing i want to stipulate is a lot of people say hey i got a cylinder cutout test and it told me the injector's bad a cylinder cutout test does not tell you a particular injector's bad it will only tell you that the cylinder's not firing now the cause of that may be an injector, but it could also be many other things, kind of like what we're going to find on this engine. So I did get the air filter off there. That is kind of a pain. And then we got to get the valve cover off. 
C15 valve cover, the SDP ones, actually has a crankcase breather filter and a sensor that goes to the valve cover. You can see it kind of there on the other side of the valve cover where I'm working, kind of right where I'm there now. And of course, the older C15s had three valve covers. If you're sitting down, can you still be at a standstill? So I've got kind of a collection going on here of some interesting failures I've found over the last couple weeks. That's from Lucky, the truck where we found the broken valve spring. But this oil bridge here, at least that's what I call it, connector, is actually off of this engine. And this when it was here about a month ago. And you can actually see it cracked there. And I've never seen that before, so I was like, that's interesting. I'll hang on to it. It also had an IVA oil pressure sensor fault, which those are super common on the C-15s. But that's what we found before. No other real findings. Now, when I pulled the valve cover, which is what we're looking at here, it has this. This is not a good sign. Those are wear marks into the underside of the valve cover. And I did find this also. Not running cat filters. Obviously, that is not what's going on here as far as what damaged it, but always irritates me nonetheless. So this is the oil connector that I just replaced. You can see the bolts are snapped off. They were holding it on. Not good. You can see the connector is actually still intact, though it is not broken. And of course, the oil bridge does not hold the IVAs down. It literally just allows oil to flow from the valve cover base to the IVA and Jake housing. So looking at it here, we got some problems. We've got a couple nuts missing. Yeah, that, that's that's also a problem. Definitely a problem. Yeah, that's bad. And you can see the other one's missing a nut. You can see some extra parts here down here. We've got an O-ring. We've got some washers. You can see the connector's broken here. Also, that's not supposed to be here. I don't know who installed that. Someone did. That is not a cat part. You can see they're installed on all the IVAs broken off. That's most likely why we have two dead cylinders is because it looks like this IVA bolt set up here is broken. Are these bolts breaking a common thing on the Assert C15s? Well, I don't want to say common, but yes, that is a known problem. I've seen it before several times. This one's worse than most, but it only had two of the seven that are supposed to be holding it in place that were not broken. I was expecting to find, since both cylinders were not firing, that the IVA housing itself, or perhaps the rocker shaft, was snapped in half. I've actually seen that before. I actually discussed that in a video. And I've, like I said, I've seen that before. And there's actually a bolt update from CAT that changes the three double-sided bolts that hold the rocker and the IVAs down. I've seen those break also. There's not a big difference. I've got a couple videos discussing that between the bolts, but this is not CAT. CAT never put clips for the injector harness on the IVA housings. I'm pretty sure I knew why they added the clips here, whoever did, because the injector harness runs right over the rocker arms there. Generally though, you don't wanna be adding and removing internal engine components from what the manufacturer had, unless there's a real big problem, and really that's not really a problem part of the engine. The bolts, however, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, those are supposed to be double-sided and they're basically have turned themselves into normal bolts now. That is bad news. So yeah, those three are all snapped off. Luckily, they're snapped off as studs now. They're not snapped off flush on the head. That makes it very tricky. You can see the remainder of the bolt threads there. So yeah, all three of those are broken. That stud's broken. That stud's broken. The large bolt in the center Actually, it goes through the IVAs is still not, that one's not broken, and then that one stud's not broken there. But there are, there's metal, pieces of metal, broken stuff all over this place. You can see the pedestal mount where the rocker shaft sits, that's worn. You can see that stud, which is the leftover from the bolt there. Luckily, those are protruding, so it shouldn't be too difficult to get out. And what other damage shall we find? So that's one of the snapped off bolts for the oil connector bridge. And look at this. <coughs> now folks, that is crazy. I have never seen this pedestal break before, crack or anything like that. It's literally broken off there. You can see the oil passage, the backside of the cam bearing. 
That means this head is toast. Not sure the condition of the camshaft. This is actually where this engine sits right now, waiting for approval for more work on it. Hopefully we'll get to dig in and fix it. So I will leave you with this. I'd say that's a filter. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this video. I'd also like to thank Kevin Lee, Lou, Marcus, Oleg, Adam, and Tony for donations at adeptapyahoo.com. And as always, thanks for watching.